Hey guys, how's it going? We rolling? Okay, so I decided to make a video today to show off all the home video game consoles that I have. And I don't know why, I guess I just felt like doing this. And uh, so I want to cover a lot of things on this channel, movies and games and all that. And so anyways, I just thought I, I wanted to show all this and um, just talk about it. Just talk about uh, what I like, what I don't like, you know... Um, video games with me growing up and I don't know how long this video will be I'm just gonna ramble on whatever so anybody who's interested watch and um, yeah I don't know I, I don't know all the specifics of the consoles and stuff I'm not gonna go into any technicalities or anything I'm just a guy who likes to play video games and uh, you know uh, I'm not really like a collector. I'm not buying these just to collect them. I like to play them. So, you know, it's like a practical thing. These are, you know, a lot of these I played in the past and I wanted them again. You know, some of these are newer consoles. And uh, first of all, some people who are gamers might say, you know, where's the regular Nintendo? Where's the Nintendo Entertainment System? You know, where's the Super Nintendo Entertainment System? Where's the Sega Genesis at? Those are like core consoles that you should have, right? Well, First of all, that thing up there is a Retro and Duo, and it plays Super Nintendo and Nintendo games. And um, I don't have anything for the Genesis uh, to play the, the carts, but I do play emulators. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I use emulators, and um, so uh, some people might not like that, but I don't care. That's what I do. <laughs> so um, this Xbox, this original Xbox, is actually a modded Xbox uh, that I'm blessed to have, and it has over 10,000 games on it. From arcade games, to Nintendo Entertainment System, to Super uh, Nintendo, and Sega Genesis, and Atari, and all that. 10,000 games is in here, besides the ability that it plays Xbox games as well. And the major reason why I own a lot of these consoles is because they uh, support light guns. And um, so uh, that being said, uh, well, I'll just say that I have light guns for the Xbox, the original Xbox. I have light guns for the PlayStation 2. I have light guns for the original PlayStation, which actually work on the PlayStation 2 also. But... I have uh, light guns for the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo, which, which can be used with the Retro and Duo. And I have a light gun for, I have light guns for the Sega Saturn, and I have light guns for the uh, Sega Master System. And so that's basically why I own all those consoles, because otherwise, you know, most of those can be emulated and whatnot, but um, you can't emulate, you know, using a gun. A light gun so you actually need the the actual consoles for that and uh, so I just want to go back to you know when I was really young and I don't know how old I was but I remember really my first video game experience that I remember was the Nintendo Entertainment System and I got that as a gift for Christmas one year and it ended up being where a lot of years Christmas was just getting a new game console and I was really spoiled I'm an only child and I loved it I always look forward to you know a new system and uh, so I remember the Nintendo Entertainment System and it came with the Morio Duck Hunt game and I love that, you know, it comes with the controller and a light gun. That was probably like my first light gun experience game, you know, shooting the ducks and duck hunt and I love that. And I don't think that I really had any light guns or really got into them again until recently, until the last year. And uh, I've been blessed to get basically all these consoles within the last year, year and a half or so. And uh, so I've owned different consoles throughout my life and, you know, I've sold them for whatever reasons and, you know, um, I've had periods where I stopped playing games, but uh, it's always been pretty much a part of my life, you know, it's entertainment that I love. I grew up with Nintendo, like I said, I ended up getting a lot of different games for it. I remember meeting a new friend for the first time and he had the Super Nintendo and that blew me away. And he had Mario Kart, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World, I love those. And I actually ended up getting that for Christmas one year. And um, a friend came and stayed the night with me, and we stayed up all night, and we beat Super Mario World. And that was so fun. That's a memory that I'll always remember. Um, you know, and I remember going to different family members. I had an uncle that had the Nintendo Entertainment System and a cousin that had it, and playing those games, playing 
Mega Man and Bomber Man and Skate or Die and Snake Rattle and Roll and just so many games. Bayou Billy. I mean, that was a fun, that was a really hard game that uh, you use. You could use the light gun in parts of that too. And I didn't even really experience a lot of light guns on the, the Super Nintendo. Um, I mean, the regular Nintendo, sorry. Uh, maybe Duck Hunt and Bayou Billy and maybe like another one. I can't remember the name right now, but a few of them. I never had the, the Super Scope for the Super Nintendo or anything like that. I didn't really get the Genesis until later on. I had the like Genesis 3 or whatever. It was like the mini console and um, that was kind of after Genesis had been out for a while. And, um, I remember my cousin had a Sega Saturn. I went to his, uh, where he was and, and I loved playing that. Uh, it was like the first CD based console that I played and, you know, it was 3d and I always wanted one. I've had dreams of owning one and I finally own one and I love it. Uh, it's just a really special console. I think everybody that, that likes to play games that knows about it really holds it to a high regard. Um, but the first Sega system, you know, besides the Genesis 3, only that later, and I didn't really play it a lot necessarily. I mean, I, I did play the Genesis a lot with other friends who had them. I have a lot of good memories playing Sonic the Hedgehog and all that. So I know the Sega was an awesome system, the Sega Genesis. And, uh, but the first Sega console that I really owned for myself that I really got to dug into was when you're at for Christmas, I got the Sega Dreamcast. And it's also a CD-based console. It came out after the original PlayStation. Uh, you know, the original PlayStation blew my mind. I got that for Christmas one year. I definitely remember that. It came with a demo disc. And um, uh, my parents got me Mortal Kombat 4 for it. And it was a 3D, uh, you know, you could actually move around instead of just side to side. It, you could, like, move in and out of the screen. And you could pick up uh, weapons that were scattered about. And it was so cool. And, um, but the demo disc had so many good games on it. I've been a wrestling fan for a long time and it had the WWF attitude or Warzone. It had Warzone on there and that blew me away, you know, playing a 3d wrestling game that, you know, at the time it seemed like the real thing, like, you know, what you see on TV. And of course it's so much more advanced now, but the PlayStation is my all time favorite console. I mean, the super, the regular Nintendo, the super Nintendo are really high up there and you know the Sega Genesis is too but I think that my heart really goes out to the PlayStation um, and so also as far as emulators like I said I've also got an Android box that you can play emulators on and I have and you know I have a PlayStation emulator on there and that's where I play most of my PlayStation games I just got that console basically for the light gun uh, to use that for those games but I'm not sure. I know what really started this was getting the Sega Saturn uh, over a year ago. Um, I don't know if I got the Xbox One first or not because I was wanting to get into gaming and I had a friend that gamed online and I was like, what should I get? Should I get a PlayStation 4, an Xbox One or what? And uh, he plays the Xbox One. The Xbox One is one of the cheapest newer ones and its strength is really the online gameplay. It has the most expensive online gameplay. I mean, I guess it makes sense because this is what people use to play online, mostly. I think that it's like 60 bucks for like a few months. I mean, it's, and then, or something like that, but the PlayStation is like 60 bucks for like a year. And the Nintendo Switch is like $20 for a year. But the Nintendo Switch, you know, doesn't have a lot of the functions that the uh, the other two do like these two the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox one you can play online and use a headset and talk to people the Nintendo switch you actually have to use an app on your phone to be able to talk to other people and only certain games support it and so it's a lot different though um, you know they got their online game stores and and Xbox does offer you like three free games like whole games and sometimes they're really good sometimes they're not but they offer you three free games you can download and keep like each month they come out with new games and so I guess that kind of justifies the more expensive price but um, so yeah and I want to talk I'll talk about the strengths and weaknesses and all that anyway but 
the Sega Saturn right here. Um, I've always wanted one, like I said, and when I got my apartment and I moved out and I had a job again and, and you know, I got my life straightened out, I was, you know, I decided I'm going to get back into gaming and uh, my cousin kind of inspired me because one of my cousins, he has like a game room that's really awesome and, you know, hopefully I can show that sometime. But I mean, he's got shelves of games and he's bought posters and all kinds of knickknacks and it's really cool being in there. I love it. And uh, so, you know, he's he's collecting different consoles and stuff, and he kind of inspired me, and he's like, you know, I want a Sega Saturn, and I'm like, well, I've always wanted a Sega Saturn, so I started looking into how expensive they were and stuff, and I don't remember exactly how much it was, maybe 150 or more, which I didn't think was too ridiculous for it, because the one that I got, it came with the three games that they would usually come with, I think, um, like if you bought the console new or something, they would come out with this pack that has Virtual Fighter 2. I think Virtual Fighter 2 and uh, <clears throat> uh, what's the other game called? The racing game. Oh, Daytona. I think that's what it was called. Like Daytona USA. An awesome racing game, an arcade racing game. I love that. And it comes with Virtual Cop. It's a shooter. And so this, this console came with those. It came with Virtual Fighter 2, Virtual Cop, and Daytona USA and two controllers and two light guns for like 150 or something like that which I thought was pretty ridiculous I thought that was a like a steal you know or it's it's at least a decent price I've always wanted one and the thing about a lot of these CD based games which made me even want it even more is that they can play backups where you can burn the games and play them because if you buy the original copies of these games on Sega Saturn stuff that's when the pricey stuff really comes in you know games can be anywhere from $100 to you know, $500 or more for just a single game just because they're rare or whatever. But if, but you, there's a way you can, you can play backups, you know, and you can buy reproductions online and stuff like that. And so I'm blessed to have, you know, pretty much any game that I want to have for the Sega Saturn. As long as the, as also with the Sega Dreamcast, it plays backup CDs. The Sega Dreamcast plays backup CDs basically right out of the box if you get, um, the older ones, uh, you can play the burnt games. The Sega Saturn requires a special like memory card, basically. The PlayStation 2, it plays backup games. You need like a memory card, a special memory card for that. And so, uh, and I think that my Xbox will play backup games too because it's modded. But So the, this original Xbox is modded, it has 10,000 games on it, the Nintendo, Sega, and all that. This plays backups, that plays backups, and the PlayStation 2 plays backups. And also the Wii. It plays emulators. It can play, I can play Super Nintendo and Nintendo on that and all that stuff. Sega CD, Atari. I can play GameCube games. I can play Wii games. All of that. So the Wii is a very, is a powerhouse for playing emulators and stuff like that as well. Um... And so, I don't know if I got the Xbox One first, or I got these around at the same time, but once I got this, the Sega Saturn with the light guns, I thought, you know, the light guns are really cool. And I wanted more games to play with the light guns, and I uh, then I kind of got the, uh, you know, I wanted to get play more light gun games and stuff, so that's how I ended up, ended up getting these other consoles. Um, the PlayStation 2... And uh, this, the Sega Master System, which I never really knew anything about. I guess when the Nintendo Entertainment System came out, this was kind of the rival to that, I think. I think it came out after that. I'm not sure. Maybe before. I don't know. But this is like the regular Nintendo version of the Sega, where like the Genesis was like the Super Nintendo version. And uh, this came with a gun called the Light Phaser. And so I mentioned how I got the original Nintendo and it had the gun and you played Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt was really one of the best shooting games on the NES, and it came with it. And there's a handful of games that are uh, good for it, and I have some of those. And uh, I can't even remember some of the names of them right now off the top of my head. Um, I wish I could think of it, but uh, not really prepared for this video. But there's one where there's like a character on the screen walking across the screen, and you shoot him to make him jump, and that game is really interesting. And so there's different variations with these games. Not every game is just shoot what's on the screen. You know, some of them, you know, are a little different and challenging. And, 
Uh, so I'm going to show all that different stuff and stuff in other videos. I'm just showing the consoles and talking about it now. Um, but the Sega Master System, however, which rivaled the Nintendo Entertainment System, it came with a gun called the Light Phaser. And a lot of the light gun games for this are awesome. And I think this blew away the zapper for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The aim is spot on and the games are just so much fun. Um, you know, there's like a game called Wanted. It's like a Western where you're, you're shooting people. And, you know, it's like the arcade games. And uh, it's got Rambo 3. And it's just so much fun. And the light phaser's just spot on. So this was so, like a hidden gem to me. I didn't know anything about that. And, and I love it. Every bit of that. So the three most, you know, the three current consoles that I have, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, and the Switch... I just the most recent ones that I have is the PlayStation 4 and the Switch. I got them around income tax time because they were both about $300 each. You notice that the PlayStation 4 is the Gold Slim edition. I don't know that lot about it, but I think that the Gold one came out for like a Taco Bell uh, giveaway or something like that. I don't know how many there are, maybe like 6,000 or something. I thought I remember. I don't remember. I don't think it's really ultra rare, and I paid around $300 for it. And generally, you know, a PlayStation that's a one terabyte, they've got the 500 gigabyte version and the 100 terabyte version because the newer consoles, when you buy a game, you have to like install it to the system and then it takes up space. And, you know, I've already got the Xbox One filled up. I think it was a 500 gigabyte and then I've got like an external terabyte too that it's almost full as well. Um, but the PlayStation 4... I wanted something different because if you notice, all these consoles are basically like the basic format that they would come in. They're, they're the standard console. And uh, I did buy my cousin a gold Nintendo 64 for Christmas. I thought it was so cool. I wanted to do something really good for him. I wanted it to be like the Christmas of old. Like I talk about how I had the joy of getting the consoles on Christmas and stuff. You know, my cousin and my friends, we all, you know, people who love video games, you know, you understand what I'm talking about. When it's like Christmas, you get the new console, and it's just so cool. I didn't know that they had gold Nintendo 64s, and when I saw that, I thought, wow, that was that was pretty amazing. And uh, he really loved that. And uh, I don't know how I saw the gold PlayStation 4, but uh, maybe I was just searching for PlayStations on eBay, and it just popped up, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. I didn't know they had those. But either way, I mean... That kind of inspired me and i'm not really a person who even likes gold i've always preferred silver over gold i'm starting to kind of like gold more uh but it's not like i really own like real gold or anything but you know gold colored stuff is cool uh, i understand why you know uh, people like that but i just love the look of it and it really wasn't any expensive any more expensive than uh a regular playstation 4. it's it's a one terabyte and it's a slim and it's a little bit scratched up. I mean, all these are, these aren't really perfect condition consoles, you know, like I said, I'm not really a collector. I buy these to play. So, uh, it came with a gold controller, which is nice too. And the switch was around $300 too. And it's kind of a special edition, not really, but I mean, they have like the regular gray joy cons and I bought the blue and the orange joy cons. I really like those, that colors of those. Um, so like I said, most of these, you know, I bought because they can play backup games or they can play, they have the light guns. Um, you know, I've never really owned an original Xbox, which is a pretty amazing console as well. Um, you'll notice that I have the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2, and the PlayStation 4. I don't have a PlayStation 3 and I don't have an Xbox 360. Both of those I've owned in the past. And I do want to own them, but I want to get modded versions of them as well, and they're going to be extra expensive. And so that's going to be something for in the future. I'm not really worried about it now because, you know, I don't really care so much to get those right now. Um, there's not a whole lot of other consoles right now that I'm looking at getting. I'm pretty happy with all this. Um, but like I said, eventually I'd like to get a PS3 and, a, and an Xbox 360 that are modded. Um... You know, I don't really need to get an Atari or, or Genesis or anything like that. I'll play the emulators. It's fine with me. Um, there's stuff like the Philips CDI, which would be cool to own, even though I can probably emulate that too, but they're extra expensive and it's just such a weird system. But they also have like problems to where, I don't know, 
they have to be like soldered or something to keep them because they have like a battery life that like dies after so long. I don't know all about that. The backwards compatibility thing is interesting too. The Xbox One will play some Xbox 360 games and it'll play some original Xbox games as well, but it doesn't play all of them. So it's not completely backwards compatible. And I own, you know, quite a bit of Xbox 360 games that I can play on here. I've looked at what's compatible and what isn't. There's games that I want to play that aren't compatible that I'll have to get a 360 to play. The PlayStation 4 is not backwards compatible at all, which is a pretty big flaw. It doesn't play PlayStation 3 or 2 or 1. And um, so I got the PlayStation 1 to play light gun games on there, like the original Time Crisis and... Uh, I've got Point Blank 2 and 3, those are fun party games with the light guns. And I didn't realize that you can actually play those on the PlayStation 2. I don't think you can play all the PlayStation 1 games on the PlayStation 2, but, uh, you know, like I've said, the PlayStation 1 is my favorite console of all time, so I'm glad to own, you know, a physical one anyway, so that's a good thing. Uh, you know, I've really been enjoying playing the Xbox One since I got that. It was the most modern console that I had. Like I said, it's one of the cheapest ones, you know, which is great. But uh, also getting the PlayStation 4 and the Switch has really renewed, you know, my faith as a gamer. There's a lot of stuff about the current generation of gaming that I don't like. But there's a lot of stuff that's really fun and new, too. That's a totally new experience. And I got, I've recently got the PlayStation VR headset, and I love that. It's, it's totally changing the game there. And the Switch, you know, it's, it looks so unique compared to all these because it's like a portable console, but it's actually a home console. It's got a dock. You set it in, and you play it on your TV. Or you can take it on the go like that, and the Switch is so versatile, and I love that. And uh, the Switch, all the, you know, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, you can download demos on. I talked about getting a demo disc for the PlayStation 1, and I love that. And I used to get, uh, each month, I'd get, like, a PlayStation magazine. My mom, we'd go to the grocery store, and I'd look at the magazines, and she'd buy them for me. I was spoiled, but, you know, I loved it. The magazine talked about games that were coming out and stuff, and then you had the demo disc where you could actually try the games, and it was so awesome. And, you know, there'd be, like, a number of games on there, like, ten games or something. But the Switch is really easy to download demos, and they're really quick. And so that's one of the things that I really liked about that at first, too. It kind of brings back that, that past where, you know, I played the demos. you got to sample the games. And uh, it's just, it's, it seems a lot easier and quicker to get them on the Switch than it does the other consoles. You know, I don't know. It's... You know, of course, the Wii was awesome. Um, it's got the motion controls. I got it facing sideways. But uh, <laughs> So the Retro N Duo, you know, that's like a clone console. That's not an official thing. That's like, you know, a side thing. And one thing I don't like it about is that the controller ports are on the side, but it does take the actual regular Nintendo and Super Nintendo controllers, and that's how I can use the light guns on there, and they do work for it. Um... They have other versions where they they have like, you know, one that has the Sega Genesis as well, and they have another one that has like the Atari and the Sega Genesis and the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo and all that. But I didn't feel the need to have that. The Sega Genesis does have a light gun for it, but uh, it pretty much stinks, and all the games that it has pretty much stinks, so I don't think that I, I don't think I'm really interested in that. The original Atari also had a light gun, and it's interesting to me, but I've uh, heard that the aim is off like no matter what, it's off slightly, and mm, I don't know, I'm not really too in a hurry to get that, so I don't think that's really something that I need. The Dreamcast has light guns, which you know I'm sometimes tempted to get, but there's only like one or two games that I would want for it, like uh, Confidential Mission, I think it's called. It's very short though, and so I don't know if it's really worth it. They had House of the Dead 2 on there, but uh, I have House of the Dead 3, which also has House of the Dead 2 on it for the Xbox. Also, I think House of the Dead 2 can be played on the, the Wii, so. Um, the Xbox only had a hand, like a few games that can be used with the light guns, but they are worth it because House of the Dead 3 is one of the best looking light gun games that I have, you know, as far as the graphics, and it's, it's an amazing game. It's fun to play with another player, and it also has silent scope with a rifle that I have. It's very fun. So, 
I don't know. Uh, we're almost at 30 minutes. I'm just rambling on about these consoles, but I love them. And after this video, I'm going to have to hook them all back up, which kind of stinks, but I kind of made it easier for myself. I got that pulled out the cords and so it shouldn't be too bad. But, uh, yeah, I just thought I would share this. Uh, so I have quite a bit of games for these, you know, um, for the, the, you know, this has the 10,000 games, like I mentioned, which is ridiculous. And you just get on there, it's like lists that you just scroll through and it shows like previews of the games. It's really cool how it's set up. But I'm also blessed to have like arcade sticks for this. So when you're playing the arcade games, it's like you're actually playing uh, the arcade, which is fun. And, uh, you know, I've been playing these more and more. I need to play them more. And... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I love games. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, I don't discriminate because, you know, some people are like, I'm only like Nintendo and Nintendo's the best. Or some people are like only PlayStation or only Xbox. No, I've got, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and Sega. I love all of those, you know, and I love Atari and all that stuff too, but I don't need to own those consoles. Ugh, so much fun. Um, it's a blessing to have all these and yeah so I want to show gameplay videos and then share a lot more with you show you a lot of the games that I have and uh, this is what I got so I don't know probably just uh, rambling on here so That'll be it, I guess. Thanks for watching. God bless, guys. See you next time.